Good evening. It's Kelly Brown here with you. It's Friday, February 19th, 2021. And this evening, I'd like to discuss the COVID-19 modeling that was just put out today by the Public Health Agency of Canada, showing that we are at risk of a dramatic increase in COVID-19 cases if we do not take further lockdown measures due to the threat of new variants. And I'm struggling to understand this modeling as some of you may be as well. And I wanted to go through and show you what was shown to Canadians today, which shows that we could have an increase to 20,000 daily cases in a very short period of time, which to give you an idea would be up from 20 to 30,000 in a week that we are currently at on a trajectory that's going down. This shows 20,000 cases per day potentially. And I'm gonna take a look at that. And then I'm gonna go back and show a few of the previous modeling presentations where we've seen these, these very dramatic curves shown to us that did not, did not bear out, did not, did not come to fruition. And I'm gonna show you that relative to the actual cases that we saw. And I'm just going to briefly go through each one. We're going to do a little bit of share of a share screen because I just find it personally quite troubling that there seems to be a lack of not only a lack of past accuracy in these models, but a lack of support for the numbers that are coming out. And all of these models are what has been used to increasingly ramp up lockdown measures, which don't seem to have much have had much effect and they're going to continually be used to justify lockdown measures wholesale lockdowns of society and business closures and you know these things are are really taking a toll on people and myself included and um, it seems that it just feels like these are these are sort of um, light justifications uh, for um, for what they're doing so Let's get into it. I'm going to do a share screen. At the end, I'm going to mention a couple of other things. Uh, this will be a shorter video. So uh, if you hang on to the end, I, I think you'll find it fruitful. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Give me just a moment. And so here we have on the right pane, I'm showing you for your reference, the average seven day cases in Canada for the whole pandemic. And we can see that Canada wide, we peaked at about 8,500 a day, uh, where we usually see a seasonal peak and trailing off quite considerably after New Year's. And on the left, I'm gonna show you some of the various modeling that's been done. And all the modeling is cataloged on the Government of Canada website. So you can just Google what I have here. I'll put the links to it in the video. And you can see that since September, we have had seven modeling presentations in the span of you know, four or five months. So just gonna show you a couple of these because a lot of them had the curve today, that the same curve that we saw today, but that never really came to fruition. So let me just show you today's modeling. We'll jump right into it. This is February 19th. This is the modeling presentation. And here we have this, uh, this young chap here um, with his mask on, he looks, looks happy. Um, we're going to go down to the modeling section and here is the first chart, which actually just shows the non variant scenario. So if we didn't have variants, this is what they're talking about. And they're acknowledging that the longer range forecast based on only non variant COVID-19 indicates Canada's epidemic is on track to become under control. So you can see here that they're showing the same peak. Okay. That you see over on the right side. But what's interesting to me is that they say that if we increase the number of contacts and ease restrictions, that you know it's inevitable that we're going to have another escalating increase in cases. And I'm not sure where the thinking is around this, and I'm not sure why there's no seasonality addressed, uh, because this is a coronavirus, is a coronavirus, and and those uh, in the past are seasonal, and and I'll touch on that at the end. So this is sort of an implication that we need to stay locked down and suppress or not increase our, not ease our restrictions and keep things suppressed. And only then can we open up. And you can see this is like April, May here. Okay. So I'm not sure how much longer people can take this. That is if there's no variants. 
So let's continue on and they add in the variance in the model. And we can see the same plot of actual cases. And then if we lift measures, okay, or, 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 or with the current health measures, even with the current health measures, we're going to be at 20,000 cases in the gray case by April. And if we lift any measures, we're going to go straight up to 20,000 cases a day within like the next two or three weeks. And again, remember, we're doing about 20, 25,000 cases per week in Canada. And so that's a massive increase. And just to put that number in context, the 20,000 a day, we test about 100,000 per day and in that 90 to 100,000 tests per day in Canada. So there'd be a 20% positivity rate overnight. Now, that may be the case, but I, I just, that those are just hard numbers to wrap your head around. Or there would be a significant increase in testing. So this is what that was shown today, okay? And this is not the first time we've seen a graph like this. And so I wanna go back to all the way back to the first presentation on September 22nd, when we were starting to increase public health measures and lockdowns and restrictions uh, through the fall. This is the first time we saw a model that showed this same curve. Now, does this look familiar? <laughs> I, just, I just showed this to you. So you can see in September, our cases started to kind of increase a little bit. Now, actually this curve ended up being somewhat accurate because uh, you know, if this is saying if we increase or maintain our current level of contacts, we could have 5,000 cases a day uh, by October, November timeframe. And actually, if you look over here, this is the actual, we actually did get around 5,000 cases a day. But this is saying if we decrease our rate of contacts and, and in the fall, as we started to put lockdown measures in, uh, we, we did put lockdown measures in, not quite yet, but that we would have a decrease, that we wouldn't see an increase, okay? So we did escalate our measures and we still saw the increase anyway, okay? So let's go to the second one. This is now a month later on October 9th when Toronto was starting to sort of see a pickup and Toronto was, was starting to restrict bars and restaurants and gyms and things. And so we saw the second time we saw this this large graph. And still saying that 500, 5,000 number per day around October, November. Okay. And that again, ended up being roughly accurate. They were a little bit ahead, but we did get there around that time. But again, you know, they're showing if we decrease our current rate of contacts by 25 to 30%, the epidemic is forecast to come under control in most locations. And that's this little blue line here. We would have, you know, Canada wide, we would have tapered off at just over 3000 cases. You know, so there was some, in, there was a slow increase to lockdown measures, uh, but we, the cases in under the decrease here uh, scenario, but cases still went up anyway. Now, we keep moving through the fall. I'm just going to go through this quickly. A few weeks later on October 30, when Toronto was having some, was having case issues. Again, now they've raised the scale to 8,000 a day. Okay. And this is where, this is where it started to become really inaccurate and 8,000 cases a day, okay, if we maintain or increase the rate of contacts, okay, that's where we would get, or we could decrease our contacts and stop the epidemic in its tracks around 3,000 cases a day. So neither of these came true. You know, we, we did eventually get to 8,000 contacts, okay, but it was not until the new year, whereas this was forecast by sort of November, okay? We're still actually sort of in the ballpark here with these curves, but let's look at the next one, November 20th. And this is when Toronto was the, Toronto and Peel, you know, went into their first full lockdown on November 23rd. Notice this, 60,000 cases a day, they have changed the scale of the graph. Look at, look at compare the scale of this graph, 8,000, okay, to this, 60,000. Okay, so this is now looking like barely a blip. And they're saying that if we, in, if we opened up, okay, or if we maintain roughly the same lockdown, we would be over 20,000 cases a day at a minimum. And if we opened up, we'd be at 60,000 cases. And that 
if we lock down harder, we could stop that epidemic before December at about 7,500 cases. So, you know, just compare either this gray line or this orange line to this peak here, we got nowhere near 60,000 cases a day. So this is where I, you know, I just get really confused by this. And I, I, don't, I don't know how these things could be so off. I don't know what the inputs are to suggest that these could be the case. And then I'm not even sure how you would prove that the lockdowns did or didn't do anything. This really, you know, in, in my line of work and in, in finance, you know, I, I could not get away with, <laughs> with, with forecasts like this. Uh, so, um, so that's, uh, that's really confusing. So let me just, uh, just a couple more here, uh, December 11th. Okay. So now they're bringing the scale down to 30,000. Okay. And in the gray scenario, if we maintain, which we basically did, we were sort of, we, we did a province wide lockdown at this point. And we see that the cases finally did sort of, well, they were supposed to peak right after in the, in December here, but we know that they didn't actually peak until January. So here we never really made it anywhere close to the 30,000 cases uh, per day, which then brings us to the last one prior to today, January 15th. Um, again, another, you know, another massive curve uh, by, by now, by February, if we had, if we had increased our cases, we would be at 30,000. And then if we maintain the current number of contacts, you know, at this point we were already in lockdown and they're saying we would maintain and we'd still be at over 10,000 cases a day. And we know that we've never hit that. Okay. So this is, this is just, again, it's more confusing to me and I'm sure to all of us. And then that brings us to where we are today. So I, it's, it's, it's really, this is today's modeling. And I, I don't really know, it's, it's hard to sort of, you know, given what we've seen in, with the past accuracy, it's, it's hard to really have any faith in these numbers. So thank you for listening to that. And I wanna finish off my video with, I think I'm gonna get in the habit of finishing my videos off with, with these things, just to kind of hammer the point home. So this is a tweet that I put out a little while ago. These are age stratified case fatality rates for Ontario to show you that people in young age cohorts have very, very low risk of bad outcomes. Kids are safe in school and folks my age and teachers age and parents ages, you know, anybody below 59, really below 69. These are extremely low fatality rates. Um, that uh, they don't differ much from, from other respiratory pathogens that we've seen. And, and we do have to protect people that have comorbidities over in these age groups where it does appear to be uh, where we know it's more deadly. I just, I just want to hammer this message home that for young folks and for the vast majority of the population, uh, you know, even my parents' age, is, is, this, is not a, this, is, this is not risky on a mortality basis. I don't want to say no risk, but, but, but certainly very low risk. These numbers speak for themselves in my view. Secondly, I want to show this chart, which I've shown many times before. This is past coronavirus circulation from 2013 to 2019. We have these seasonal peaks every year between six and 10% positivity rate. And this is the Ontario data. I'm comparing it to the Ontario curve, okay? But it's the same everywhere, roughly. And we had, I'm not saying that SARS-CoV-2 is definitely seasonal, but we certainly saw it peak at exactly the time and at about, exact, at about the positivity rate that we've seen other coronaviruses peak. So everyone, I hope that was informative. Um, I'm not really sure what to say. I'm not really sure what to say about what I see. Um, but maybe I'm, I think I'm just more confused. And, uh, so, you know, we really got to get society going. We've really got the people really struggling out there and there's, our lives are waiting for us. And every day that passes that we don't get our culture back, our sanity back, um, is, is, 
is really a, a truly a lost day and 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 makes it harder to recover collectively where to where we were prior to this pandemic so that's my message thanks everyone for listening um rubicon capital underscore on twitter my dms are always open let's keep the the dialogue open and uh have a great weekend everybody thanks <laughs>